Welcome to a special Treehouse edition of TFW Podcast. Ishan here, Matt here. That's right, no girls allowed today. All fellas, all day it long. Is, it is the dirty dynamic duo today. And probably on Sunday's pod, maybe we let Rhodesia come back after that. If she's on her best behavior, not too sure, right? But we got to see, she's on punishment right now. Yeah, she's on but in all seriousness, uh, Rhodesia's taking a sick day. So uh, well wishes to you, sis. Speedy recovery. She'll be back in no time. But Matt, what do you want to talk about? And you know what's crazy about that real quick before we get started? You know what's crazy about that? So um, Rhodesia is, so I, we, I am back in Chicago. We were in Michigan for the weekend. She's got some things she needs to take care of. This is the longest we have ever been apart in the 22 oh. years we've been together. Wow. How long has it been? It's going to be a week. Been a week. Okay. Yeah. We've never, it's been, we've been five days before. I think maybe we even did six. We never did seven. So we'll see how this plays out, but love you, Rhodesia. Hope you're feeling better. And uh, I know she's going to be listening and giving us some feedback. I am quite, quite sure, but it is the guys today. It's not like we, we're not going to talk about only fans and some of the pictures I saw today of Lacey Evans. I didn't know that she went like all the way. So we're not going to talk about any of that. Before we do get to the wrestling talk, though, I do want to make a comment. We went to go see 50 Cent this past weekend. All right, 50 is one of my goats. After the show, he probably is my goat when it comes to hip-hop. I love Jay-Z, love Lil Wayne. I'm, I'm from that era. And I was so irritated because the show was beyond incredible. It was the best hip-hop show I've ever been to. It was the production of the biggest scale R&B show you can think of in the arena. But it was a hip-hop show. So he had a live band. He had dancers. He had all that. Okay. And I was irritated because it was sold out. And every show he's been doing is sold out. But I hadn't seen really anything on the internet about his show. Every damn day I get on the internet, I'm seeing this stupid uh, freeze challenge at Beyonce's concerts where everybody's taking the photos of everybody freezing at one part of the song. We went to the Drake concert and everything from Drake every other day on air. is how many bras he gets thrown onto the stage. And that's all marketing <laughs> publicity. I get all that. Right. It was nothing for fifth. So this was actually was supposed to have been his last date. Uh, they're about to go overseas after this week and go for like another 30 shows. But I swear to God, the show was so good. If it wasn't toward the end of the concert, I would have gone somewhere else to go see it again. That's how good wow. that show was. It was, it was pretty wow. incredible, man. So shout out, shout out to 50. Uh, of course, he brought Eminem out, which was fantastic. Crowd went, went crazy. But yeah, he had, they had 15,000 people down at Pine Knob, which was a lot. So uh, just, I just wanted to kind of mention that because we know a lot of stuff is just like marketing. And I'm sitting here watching this show, and I'm like, why is this not getting more publicity than what it is? But whatever. I mean, I guess it's all good. But it's supposed to be his last tour that he's ever going to do. And if it is, he absolutely did it right. He went out with Hey, you, all, you almost made me want to go see a concert. Almost. You, you got to. still don't want to go. We got to get you to a show. We got to get you to go. a I'm show. I still don't want to go. I'm good. Sad, sad, man. Don't want to go to a show or a concert. How about... If we were in Colorado, if we went to SmackDown, think about those fans who had no idea. Some of them, when they bought the tickets, John Cena was going to be there because they just announced Cena but about a month ago. You get Pat McAfee. You get The Rock. You get John Cena. Man, they were in for a treat on Man. Friday night. Had to Two be, and right? Two and a half million viewers. A uh, hundred million or 103. I think they're up to like 104 million now. Views on The Rock's return. Let's start there. Let's 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 start with the Rock because there's a lot we could talk about. Let's start with just his return. It was a surprise. They didn't call it. There were some rumors, of course, because he had did uh, the Pat McAfee show earlier in the day, which was in Denver, and he talked about WrestleMania 39, which we will absolutely talk about too. After I asked you, kind of with just your thoughts on how he looked and what he did, uh, so then he shows up, surprise. And uh, Austin Theory, he was pretty good in that segment, man. I thought he really held his own. 
with Pat. I thought he held his own with The Rock. And that's not easy to do when you got people as charismatic as both Pat and The Rock. And uh, he held his own. He actually he, he did more than held his own. Um, but talk about it, man. What would you think about just seeing The Rock back and him coming back to do business with Austin Theory? So I was super surprised. I was actually eating at the time, watching the show, man. And all of a sudden, I hear the, if you smell, and I'm like, oh, snap, right? So I turn around, and like, I'm, and I'm still, I said, my mouth would just drop, right? I'm not, I, I'm not popping. I'm not jumping out of my seat. I'm just, I just turn, and I just go, oh, my gosh. And I just was along for the ride at that point, brother. I was, I got to be honest, as I always am, I didn't notice Austin Theory at all. It was all rock. All day long for me, brother. I, I think, you know, Austin said something to him. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, Rock had to, you know, shut your bitch ass up. I'm yeah, like, sure oh, it is. Right. <laughs> like, the, only sure thing, the only thing when he said that, like, I had, had my little five-year-old in the yeah, room. The you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I'm like, oh, whoops. <laughs> well, but no, man, look, it was it, it was great seeing him back, man, because he's back, back home. As mm-hmm. John Cena said later on, what do you think? So, it we had it spoiled for us because we were traveling from Chicago to Detroit. Oh, you right the next day. And I stayed off the internet though. I was good. Perfect. I get to sleep. Perfect. No issues. I'm like, I'm gonna just watch it first thing in the morning. I wake up to a notification on my phone. I look TMZ rock returns to WWE. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. (laughs) <laughs> you gotta be thanks a lot tmz who would have thought tmz would have pushed no- notification on the iphone so man but it's you told that. me a long time ago to, to, to silence dude. tmz bleach and all of them i did everything what else happened? but tmz i did everything else but tmz <laughs> um but it didn't take away from it from me because i still had a little bit of an inkling when he talked about wrestlemania 39 on the mcafee show hmm. earlier that night or today i was like okay i can see pat showing up to smackdown and with the merger going through, I'm like, I can see Rock showing up. What I was kind of surprised about was um, the business he came back for. So now let's talk about what he said on the Pat McAfee show. He said that WrestleMania, everybody's heard about now. It was supposed to be in the handshake agreement. They were locked in for WrestleMania 39. They didn't do it. I think that speaks to what we talked about here on the show about a month ago, where I said, I think they didn't do it because the bloodline story wasn't going to be over. And now where does that lead? The rock just came back just to put Roman over and the story's still going. That's not big enough. I think that's what it was. Either you can look at that. or If you really, really want to peel back the layers and the onion, was it the Vince McMahon allegations? And rock was like, this is probably not a good time for me to associate myself with the WWE. Cause I don't want every question to be, what do you think about this man's sexual allegations and all that kind of stuff? So that could be it too. And now we know why they went after Austin and it sucks to say, but Cody was the, you know, the third choice. Cause he wasn't going to win. That's why he was the third choice. It wasn't his time yet. So then I'm watching, I'm like, man, okay. So if he's coming back just to do this business with, with Pat and Austin theory, does that mean we don't get him from WrestleMania 40? I know what he said on the McAfee show that, Hey, he'll be open to do 40 in Philly. I get that, but it seems like it would be a waste of a return on Friday to do what he did to just come back a few months later to start the rock program. Am I reading too much into it? You think I'm off base or do you kind of see where I'm coming from? Yeah, in some ways, man. I I thought about that because I remember you mentioned about, you know, the reason why he didn't do the Hollywood mania. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to think about something. That dude's like, what, 50 something? Either now? 50 or 51. One of the two, I think. Right? And after mania, he wouldn't have been around for quite some time. So this isn't like old school, like I'm in the thick of things. So like, right, this is like, I'm only showing up maybe like once or twice a year. So whatever happens with the bloodline really isn't relevant to the rock. Like the rock is about that moment he's in and that program he's doing right now, which would have been huge. Mm-hmm. We end up getting a huge mania, right? Which kind of birthed another superstar, which they solely needed 
which is Cody Rose, right? Like yep. I, I said, it, as a big Cody fan, like he's bigger now than I, I ever imagined he, he would be um, as a fan of his. Like he is on on a whole nother level. And so it seemed like everything worked out the way it should. The only thing I have a problem with is with Rock coming out and acknowledging like, hey, man, nah, that was my slot. That mm-hmm. wasn't Cody. That was that was mm-hmm. me, right? So letting everybody kind of know like, oh, mm-hmm. Cody was, mm-hmm. he was like, he was the third fiddle, right? So what does that say about this superstar that you're building that you solely need in the company, right? This superstar that's carrying your raw brand that's selling out house shows, that's increasing attendance, things of that nature. That's not a good look. I didn't like that. You um, know, I was but, hoping on Raw Monday when Cody was like, what do y'all want to talk about? I was hoping he was like, I, I got something to talk about. Rock, you punk mother. I was hoping yeah. he was going to go there. And he didn't. He went to Jay Uso. But man, when he said that, I was like, please say something about The Rock making those comments. But He's I know he wasn't AW. going to. Yeah, it's saying yeah, AEW. Right. He ain't going to do that. But hey, yeah, man, any, that, hey, that was any, my any blind, any blind faith AEW fans, we love you. We thank you for your support. But you may want to turn this podcast off like now. Um, if you're a blind faith AEW person, because I got some thoughts about AEW, and I'm not, it's not burying them, but with the Jade news, and we'll get into that, I just got some thoughts about where they are and what they may need to do and where they are in the progression of where we thought they would be on how hot they started four years ago. So just fair warning for anybody who is just, AW can't do anything wrong. You may just want to hang up now. No, just keep Thanks. listening. Enjoy the journey. But let's, let's stay with the rock. We'll see, but so, we'll see you on Sunday. <laughs> so I'm thinking about something. I've been waiting like all week to ask you, right? So I got one another problem, right? Because you've been selling me all year about Cody finishing the story. Mm. Mm. Finishing the story, right? So we need to build Cody. We need to build Cody so he's a bigger deal, right? This is all something that's been happening organically. They've been booking this at the uh, at, at the seat like the at the seat of their pants, right? I'm actually saying it wrong, but you know what I'm talking about. They've been booking this on the fly the entire time, right? They have no well, it idea. Ab- absolutely feels that way after SummerSlam. You, we could argue, we could argue that no, after Mania it made sense. Even though the Brock, how the Brock feud started, didn't make sense. It made them even bigger. You can, you can, hey, that took you to the summer. You can absolutely say that the Bloodline Civil War made sense, and that was planned. And then Jay and him, which is how this whole thing started for SummerSlam, was planned. But it feels like they forgot. Oh, there's TV after SummerSlam. When, when and, is he finishing this story, man? Like, so if we get if we get Rock and Roman in Philly at Mania, right? So when are we so Cody's gonna finish the story the following year? That's a long ass time, man. So like, I, what's where where are we going with all this? You do agree, Rock Roman's a bigger match than Cody Roman two, correct? Yeah. Okay, so then that's got to be Mania, Rock and, and Roman. And that needs to be the finale of anything Bloodline related. Maybe the Bloodline's already dissolved, and now the Rock is coming back to say you couldn't even handle that. And now I'm coming for the top spot. Who knows? Whatever. They can, they can figure that out. But you know what, though? Is it, though? Because, like, you know, they're inserting Rock into this whole thing. The 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 friction is the internal guys that's been in there since day one. Like, right? Yes, but you would hope it's September right now. September 20th. You would hope come April, we're past any friction of these members of the bloodline. Because if not, like, th- this can't last another seven months. It Got can't. It, it, as constructed, it can't. Now, if you want to bring in more Samoans and do something with that, okay, cool. <laughs> but Solo, Jimmy J, Roman, we we still can't be at odds come March and, and April. So, but I think the smart money is, and part of this is because it's, it's in Chicago. I would love for them to do Roman and Cody at Survivor Series. Give Cody that shining moment. Give him the belt. And then if you need to take Roman off of TV until January, if you need to take Roman off TV till February, whatever you need to do 
for that to get to where we get to rock and Roman. You can do it and nobody's going to care because now SmackDown is Cody's show. Hmm. And it, the seeds are there. Send Cody to SmackDown. We still don't know who's going to be part of the trade. I know there's a lot of people who think like it's going to be KO. And that would make sense. But I love KO. I don't think KO is enough for Jay. Like, Jay is like a top three guy right now in the company. Top four. I, I don't think Jay and Cody is a even exchange. But it's, it's two. It's two, but they, they get two picks. Like you, So for Jay, they get Cody and somebody else? I think I think Cody stays right where he is, right? Because they need another big draw on Raw. But when you can do a SmackDown, because look, this is another thing we didn't talk about. Like Fox, the word on the street is that Fox mm-hmm. don't want to pay that 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 WWE money. They like, said they're right? not paying it. So guess what? They showing you that anytime they can drop the rocket on SmackDown. They got John Cena on SmackDown. They got Roman Reigns coming back to SmackDown. These are three of the biggest names in company wrestling history on one brand. Dropping what? 2.5 mil? Yeah. I want it's it's gonna be this is unannounced. So what what's what's what we gonna see next week, right? Like if they announce a, a big uh like I don't know if Rock's coming back, I don't know if Pat's coming back, but what if they announce something even bigger for next week? Like, you mean, like, hey, hey, Fox might have had to think about opening that wallet for him, right? And I think if they would have announced Rock, I think they would have eclipsed three mil easily for that segment. Yeah, no doubt. Um, And I think they probably would have done, like, probably, like, 2.7, 2.8. Mm-hmm. Probably, and that's that, a big that number nowadays. Like, yeah, it is. It's a huge number. And that's probably yeah. light work. That could be light work. Because we yeah. saw some astronomical numbers for the bloodline. We remember those 30 minute Civil War segments that were popping yeah. huge numbers. Um, but yeah, so, th- so that's what I would do. I, I, I would still go Rock and Roman at 40. And then I would have Rock, or I would have uh, Cody and Roman. Like I said, I, I, love, I, I love to say Survivor Series because you could play on in Chicago. And Cody can play on this is the place where I did the first independent show. This is the place where I wrestled with the torn peck and I was out for nine months where I had to come back at the Royal. He could play on all that. If you don't want to play on all that, then do that match at the Royal Rumble and have the Royal Rumble be by far the biggest Royal Rumble in the history of the company and then do Roman and uh, Rock. Because I don't think anybody will look at it as a consolation prize if it doesn't happen at Mania. Maybe people who bought tickets assuming, okay, we, I'm buying tickets to see Cody get crowned, but nobody would care if Roman loses to Cody at Survivor Series or the Rumble. Cody, Cody got his belt now because Cody is still spinning his wheels. When I saw they announced this past Monday, he was going against Dom again, and, mm-hmm. that, and that was just a means to the end to get to the story mm-hmm. because the match is only like two minutes long, but I was like, damn, we're doing this again? We just did this a couple months ago. Um, but yeah, but that's what I would do. So as big of a Cody fan as you are, would you feel slighted in the least bit just sticking to the TV? Because, yes, you could feel slighted behind the scenes that if 40 was supposed to be his crowning a moment, he is the last thing we see at the end of night two, and he gets the $100,000 worth of pyro blowing off. Take all that out. And to say as a fan of him on television, would you be good with seeing him win that title from Roman before Mania? Yeah. Um, because I do ultimately think that we got to get that rock and roll match. I think from a from a fan's perspective, that's one of the dream matches, one of the last dream matches we have in wrestling. We got to get it. But I wouldn't mind seeing Cody win at any point. But one thing I've been waiting to ask you: so if we go, if, let's say this fan booking Mania Forty, right? Okay. If we can get Rock and Roman, right, and that's night two main event. I know we talked about it and we said we don't want to see it. And we maybe don't want to see Cody with that championship. But they've been planting the seed for some time with Seth and Cody. Whose show it is? Who's better? What if we get a Seth and Cody night one at Mania? That's a hell of a match. Because like if, 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 if Cody isn't inserted in the Roman, Roman match, which he shouldn't be, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like he's too big of a name for you not to have something big for. And I think a world heavyweight championship match, Seth and Cody, 
and they continue to tell that story about Dusty's kids, might be something to look into. Would that be would that be title for title, or no? Can we get title for title? I mean, you could because like you don't do Roman and Rock for the title. You can't do it for the title because we know Rock's not staying along. Like Rock's not well, going to be. I champ. think Rock. Will, I think Rock will lose honestly. So we're talking about in that time frame. We're talking about so the next. So the we're talking about oh wait wait, wait. so what we're talking about um we're talking about the next Mania Forty is in April right we've already yeah. passed SummerSlam so like the next thing would be um for me I want to see uh, I will I will I will keep the championship on Rock I mean on on Roman and oh, right. I would do so, okay, world so, yeah so you would so you so you would go if you were booking it for forty you would go Roman with the title against Rock yes yep wow and then and if then. You, and Rock is doing the honors. He's doing the honors. Then if you do that, you have Roman beat Hogan's record. And we I run this again for another year with, with the title. I, that's what I would do. And I mean, it's, it's doable. You, it's you, doable. You've, come, you, we don't you've know. come this far. you come this far. Why not do it? Well, like, it's right? doable it, it, as long as he's on TV more. We, we can't go another year like this with the championship. We, we, I mean, we can't. So the word is he's going to... His next title defense is in November in Saudi. Spoiler alert: If you don't, if you stay off the internet, you don't want to hear. Pause us or mute us for like fifteen seconds. It's going to be against AJ. We know he's not losing in Saudi to AJ, Mm-mm. but that's his next title match. So he's he's done the Rumble. He's done Elimination Chamber. He's done Mania. He's done SummerSlam. He's not going to do Saudi. I'm going to assume he's not doing Survivor Series. No. Keep and then we probably don't see him defend the title again until the Royal Rumble. So he is legit now just showing up at the major, major events, the major, major shows. You can't just, you, I, don't, I don't think you can run that again next year. Because we're not even seeing him. Now, say if we were seeing him a couple times a month, you can get away with that. Because we were, we were at least seeing Brock more than this. Brock would come out, he wouldn't do anything. He would just jump him down while Heyman cut a promo from 8 o'clock to 8.15 on Raw, and then he was out at 8.20 from the building. But at least we still saw him. We're not even seeing Roman right now. So I think you could I, do it if we see him more. I think we would see him more. I don't know if we would see him defending the championship. Right? right? I think you're going to get what we were getting before he went on his break. Whatever he's doing right now, while right, he's been off TV, prior mm-hmm. to that, you know, you see him, you know, here and there. Maybe you see him in a tag match or something like that. Um, you see him in the backstage segment, maybe in an interview or so. Um, but I think you laid it out. I think they can absolutely keep the title on them. I mean, you've you've come this far to break the track. Cause I think the WWE right now is trying to rewrite history to mm-hmm. have more of their modern stars, right? Because look, Hogan ain't gonna be around forever. Roman's a young man. They can celebrate him for the next 30, 40 years. That, and if you're watching wrestling right now, if you're a kid, right, nine, ten years old, you're probably going to be a lifer. And, you know, you may run through a time where, like, it's not cool to watch wrestling. You stop watching. You'll be back. They, you all, we all come back. We always come back. Even if you don't watch, you follow up on Bleacher Report or you know what's going on. Uh, that's where those hundred million views came from, from The Rock. Um, everybody can relate to Roman Reigns, right? They, they'll know who Roman Reigns is. People don't know who Pedro Morales is unless you're in our no. age group. Nobody knows no. who Honky Talk Man is I, unless you're in our age I, group. I don't know Pedro. That was way before our time. We only know, you know him because we're, you know, we're fans and we're, we are fans of the history of the business, too. We don't know that dude. Never right. seen his matches, so, any of them. But we, everybody's going to know Guther. Everybody's going to know Roman. Everybody's going to know Bianca. You know, so it's funny, too, because we, we just sat here and talked for like 20 minutes about The Rock. That wasn't even going to be the, the, the main story on this show before Friday. Main story in this show was going to be Jade leaving AEW and going to WWE. Depending on what side of the uh, coin you're on, either it's either that or it's it's that. Depending on what side of the coin you're on. I am all about the air horn. Oh, this, this is what I like. Give me this is what I like. I it could have been we could have woke up and heard Bianca Bellover's going to AEW. Give 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 this all to me. 
I want, this is what I want. I want the craziness of the business, people flip-flopping. Now, I said a few minutes ago, if you are a AEW apologist and they cannot do any wrong, thank you for checking out the podcast. Follow us on Twitter if you have not. Follow us on Instagram, that's FNW. Check out our YouTube, that's Freaking Wrestling. We will see you on Sunday. Okay? So we're going to get a little nasty, potentially. Oh. All respect, though. All, all respect. But we got to have some conversations. Ishan, let me ask you. This news came out uh, late Wednesday night. Late Wednesday night. So we, we watch on Dynamite. They announced Chris Stanlander and Jade for Rampage. I didn't think much of it. What I thought was like, damn, they're really trying to make Rampage back to being a thing. All right, I'm locked in. I even tweeted it. All right, I ain't watched Rampage in months. I'm in. Cool. Let's do it. About 1.30, I'm laying in bed. I'm about to, you know, I, I always check Twitter one last time to see what's going on. Sean Ross Sapp tweets out, uh, Jade's contract is up in AEW, and his belief she's going to WWE. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, wow. Okay. Not thinking. We're talking like next week. I'm thinking. We're like, all right. <laughs> she's finishing up. This is probably her last match now that now we know it's on Rampage. Okay, that kind of makes sense a little bit. But I'm thinking like maybe she has a non-compete or maybe her contract is up like this time next month. And this was just their way of tying the bow. Hey, put Chris out again. You right. know, put mm-hmm. her over on your way out. Yeah. No, come to find out her allegedly her contract was like up this week in this past weekend. And she is in Orlando already yep. at the Performance Center. Ishan, my good man, before I ask you, was her time maximized in AEW? And that's probably a harder question to answer than maybe the first thing you think about. Let's start with AEW. What does this say, if anything, about AEW right now? Well, you know, I didn't think about it that deeply, to be honest with you. I just was, as you said, I was shocked that her contract quietly expired without anyone knowing about it. And that's it, it's funny how the financial part of AEW is kept so quiet. Like, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you don't know when people are coming and going. Like, that's all kept under the rug, hush, hush. But if someone farts in the wind, we know how it smelled, what time it was. <laughs> you know, we, we know what they ate. We know everything, right? But we don't know about the financial stuff. So I was just surprised just like you were that this was happening because, and then it, it kind of started making sense. Okay. They brought her back so she can do the honors on her way mm-hmm. out two days later. <laughs> like mm-hmm. man, Matt, where I mean, how surprised were you by all this news? So like, how's her contract up? Okay. Maybe she just wanted to go to WWE and God bless her for it. I think she is going to be a star among stars. In WWE, Mm -hmm. I think, oh my God, do I think they're going to make her a colossal star. Mm -hmm. I think her work is going to be better in the next, and this is not hyperbole. I think we're going to see her be a better worker in the next four months than she has been in the last four years. So now I'm watching the Rampage match with a really, really different lens, right? Because now I'm watching on everything that she can improve on. I'm not typically that guy, that fan that you watch to be critical. Um, but, that, but I'm watching that match against Chris as that. And I'm looking at she does nothing in between her moves. That's a big thing in wrestling. What are you doing in between your moves? How are you selling? How are you registering? How are you reacting? If you were, to, if you now, if I said that, if you were, if you got that on your DVR, you, you know, go back and watch that match. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. She goes, move, 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 move. And that's it. You got to add things in between that. You know, um, she's just going to be really, really good. The reason why I asked that question about AEW, there was a video clip that hit social media over the last few days. And it's her talking about CM Punk and how much she likes CM Punk. She tells a story about 
CM Punk helped her out with using the chair. She's at the show and she's told that you're using the chair tonight. She's you know doing a she's throwing a chair chair shot at somebody. Jay doesn't know how to do a chair shot, but you're doing it on live TV. So he goes to CM Punk says, "Hey, I've never used a chair before. Can you tell me? Can you teach me?" And you know he shows her. All right, we're all good. One, how do you have her set up to use a chair and nobody's taught her how to use a chair? Two, how do you have her use a chair and nobody has taught her how to use a chair? Take out a chair can be a horrible weapon if it's used wrong. Mm -hmm. It can really hurt somebody. Let's take that out. I'm only going off of the training piece, the aspect of how I said she's going to be better in four months than she was in four years in AEW. They're going to set you up for success. And that's one of the good things we like about AEW. We get it. You get to go there. You get to perform your art the way you see fit. I understand that. But when I heard that story, and now it's on Monday, so now we know she's gone at this point. First thing I think to myself is, if she didn't know how to use a chair, imagine what else she doesn't know. You don't know what you don't know. And then that got me kind of really thinking about AEW and where they are right now. So, E, let me ask you, was her time maximized in AEW? You know, I'm going to say yes. And to your, the chair spot thing, I, I see what you're saying, but I also see both sides. I wonder it's one of those things to where they say, hey, this is what I want you to do. Not really knowing if she can do a chair shot or not, right? She's, you know, anybody should be able to do a chair shot. I guess it might be their mentality. And Jay probably would, as if most people would say, yeah, no problem, right? Mm -hmm. Because I've been putting those scenarios, right? Sink or swim. Like, yeah, give me the opportunity. I'll figure it out, right? right? That might have been her mindset. Like, hey, I didn't know how to do it, but I was going to figure it out. That's what I needed to do. Now, if she went in and said, hey, I don't know how to swing a chair, or she told them that she was uncomfortable, with that and they still decided they wanted to do it that's another thing but i think it might be one of those things to where you know it wasn't much thought into the suggestion of the spot she didn't give any pushback she said she'll figure it out um but as far as maximizing i absolutely think that they maximize jay because you think about it she was probably their most protected star on their show like right she had mm -hmm. what 70 wins or whatever it was right? She's never lost a match, period. She's never been pinned before. You know, she's had um, countless mouthpieces, right? She's had um, valets, right? She had a team they gave her. Um, mm -hmm. They gave her her own championship, for Christ's sakes, right? Like, and she was a book very dominant, like very, I don't, I can't think of an instance where Jay was made to look like a fool. Like, she was always built to be very dominant. And I think they max some so i would say that i I think we talked a couple of times i said that they had her in too long of matches i think they're probably like the for her first 35 maybe 40 matches should have been like under six minutes like let's this 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 utilize and show what she can do and things she can do well instead of having her work you know wrestle these 10 or even 12 minute matches or even eight minute matches like that extra two minutes can be detrimental sometimes but I think they used her for AEW standards better than anybody. You know, mm, look okay. at Warlow. You look at Warlow and what they did to him. Like, Where, right? Hey, where's Char Warlow? Like, it's like, where's Wardo? Hey, that's that's the new that's that's the new game. You know, said so where's Wardo? Where's Warlow? Like, right? But you think about Jay. Like, you think about women on that roster, right? She, if you look the way they're they're booking, Brit right now like from a totality standpoint like jay's been booked the strongest woman on their roster period and that's saying something for a company i think sometimes falls short on protecting the wrestlers in in, in long-term storytelling and booking she's been built incredibly incredibly well she's only had two losses right and that was those are the ones on the way out <laughs> she lost right. to chris when she dropped the title then they brought her back she lost one more time and they got her out of there you you may have changed my mind. I was going to say no. And the reason why I was going to say no was because, and you're right about, she was absolutely booked strong. 
you cannot deny that. Undefeated streak for the majority of her career. You cannot deny that. Especially compared to her skill level. Correct. I was about to say protected. But when I, but for me, when I asked the question of was she maximized, I'm going to say no. Because you had her for four years. And tell me what was the few that you're going to remember her in or the story you're going to remember her in from her AEW run. But you know what? You also got to take in mind the company as a whole. Like how many storylines can you say in their four or five year run that you could say that you remember? Right. There's a couple. Well, yeah, well, I think, I think, well, I mean, this is real quick. I think Britt and Thunder Rosa will be tied to the hook tip to the hip forever we always will remember that's, them that's together from a, that's, that's from a match though not from a storyline though well no it was matches remember because they, they did the death match remember, i mean they remember they that was the feud for a long time in the women's division was those yeah two. matches that's what i remember matches um though. give me warlow and mjf mm-hmm. that feud i'm going to remember i mean mjf i guess maybe we gotta take mj off all his besides the four-way was memorable. writing his stuff um yep. yeah but like Jericho has had some really, really memorable feuds. Uh, Kenny has had some really memorable feuds. Hangman has had some. Uh, so they're, they've had some. I, she some. just hasn't had any. And I'm just like, okay, she was never really put in a spotlight on television. And I was okay with it because I'm like, well, she's learning. She's learning. Mm-hmm. She's learning. And then come to find out she leaves. Mm-hmm. So now let's talk about that piece. She initially had a contract offer from WWE, but we know how they they get down. They want your life, right? You move to Orlando to work NXT, and you are ours. And they told you her don't have much, an right? outside life. Yep. And she's like, "Well, I don't want to do that. Uh, it was too much." And I'm guessing they must have changed you, their mind. On do that. you do you remember what they said to her? Did you remember what they what she said? They said to her, "Uh, not no, not word for word. Not I don't know word for word, but it was something that was sent like uh, she said." Something like, "Hey, what about my family?" And oh yeah, their their reply was, "We are your family." <laughs> like, oh, that's a like... damn coat. Shout out, hey, that's that's a bar. That's a bar. I'm gonna use that next time somebody asks something. What about? I'm like, I am whatever it is. I am that. <laughs> um, that's a bar. So yeah, so they must have completely changed course on that now for her to go there. But for AEW, I guess for her contract to be up. You gave her time off. That was planned time off. That's that's confirmed. And her contract's about to be up? Like, you didn't add that time on? Or you didn't say, like, hey, your contract's up in, like, three months. Let's do something. I know you got something you want to work on. Hey, but I need you before your contract's up. I I, I don't know how, you know, that that's kind of crazy to me. But to me, this is a potential seismic shift. Mm. I remember, as you remember, where you were when you saw online that Big Show had signed to AEW. Mm-hmm. We were texting back and forth. I also know you remember where you were when Mark Henry came out on that stage, on the AEW pay-per-view. Those were moments of, whoa, shit's starting to change. Because these are WWE lifers. And if they're willing to come to AEW, I don't care if they're not wrestling. The point is, they left where they've been for 15, 20 years to go to the competition. We saw Cody go back. Okay, it's Cody. That's home for Cody. That's where his whole family made a name for themselves for the most part. We get that. But now you got Jade, who was offered to go. She went to AEW, and now she's going to WWE. And holy hell, when they make her the star that she's supposed to be, when they work with her on her skills, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to see that and they're going to jump from AEW to WWE. That was one of the biggest things I thought about through all this, is this potentially can be a seismic shift. Because you can easily say for Cody, like, oh, but that's Cody. It's Cody Rhodes. So, of course, he gets... I mean, event at WrestleMania. It's Cody Rhodes. He's been here as Stardust. He's been, he was there as Cody Rhodes. He was with Randy Orton back in the day and Ted DiBiase Jr. That's Cody Rhodes. Of course, that makes sense. But when you give Jade a heavy push and she may be working Bianca at next year's WrestleMania or whatever that looks like, Ricky Starks, Warlow, 
the list goes on and on of people that can look at that and say, well, damn, if she can do it and she has no ties to WWE, oh, let me go ahead and take a chance. Oh. Momentum is squarely in WWE's favor right now. Two years ago, three years ago, momentum was squarely on AEW side. Ticket sales were super high. They were out running markets in the United States over WWE previously. They would go to Jersey or wherever, and AEW sold more tickets than WWE. That is not a thing now. And I don't know. I don't know if it is Jared who is. Remember, they brought Jared in to kind of run their live event business. I don't know if. I don't know if he if he's running just the wrong towns. I don't know if he's making these prices wrong. I don't know what they're doing, but they just now today. You, you saying he a double a, a double agent? You think he a double agent? No, I don't think I don't think that at all. But he needs <laughs> to get off, he needs to get off my TV wrestling. I'm over it um, for sure, for real. I I think they just hit eight thousand or eighty five hundred for. Uh, tonight's Grand Slam show, they were at 20,000 two years ago. Mm. They were at, I think, 15,000 last year. Mm. And you are at half that now. And you, I think they moved over like 2,000 seats in the last week because they dropped prices drastically. Mm. So I say all that just to say when you don't have momentum, it's like sports. You know this, E. You're watching a basketball game. And that team goes on a 15-0 run and game is over. You lost momentum. And you're, like, you're trying to get it back. And everything you do ain't working. Now you're fouling. You're getting frustrated. So now you're getting technicals. And you're like, I, man, once that momentum hit, there's nothing I can do about it. And that's what it kind of feels like to me right now with, with AEW. As good as I feel like their TV has been since All Out and All In. I think they need to do something pretty big on Grand Slam tonight and i think they're running the two-hour show for rampage to kind of try to get some momentum back because if you look at it Mm -hmm. they haven't done anything different but that's also the problem too because what you're doing isn't working the crowd they had at collision this past saturday i think was like 2400 or something like that 2500 so like the ratings haven't changed much but your fan base is saying what you're giving us is not enough for me to spend money i i know years ago when wwe's business was super soft you would go to a show and the entire second deck was tarped off was black i remember those times and now they're selling out everywhere they go it's a hot ticket but we talk a lot on this show about how we how they book week to week on tv and you gotta give people more than matches we love AEW for the matches but damn it something is off right now with their product and we're still getting the good matches. That's how you know that's not the way to book. It's not like now you're like, man, you know what? I miss the days where we got great matches on AEW. On Collision. I thought Chris and Britt brought it. I thought that was a fantastic women's title match. Probably one of the best matches I've seen from Britt in a very long time. So shout out to, the, to those girls. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. That's not enough. It's not enough. You, you need more than that. So I, I think they have, they have an opportunity this week to do something. And I don't know if that is put the belt on Joe, as crazy as that may sound. But I feel like they need a shot in the arm, which should not be the case when you just had 70,000 people in Wembley at All In. That should have been the shot in the arm, and it's not right now. So I think they're, just in, I think they're in a funky spot. And I think there's a lot of people in that locker room that's looking to see how they treat Jade. I really do. And when it goes good, because it will, I think we're going to remember this moment as, man, maybe that was the moment where blah, blah, blah happened. Man, that's a lot, man. I I agree with you on most things. Uh, But if you look at the history, and this this isn't to take away from your points to add to it, you think about, we talked about Big Show. I remember that. I forgot about that. We talked about Big Show. We were super surprised and happy, but... We know the reason why we forgot about it, because we forgot about Big Show. He hasn't meant anything to AEW. Uh, I like Mark Henry a lot. I love Mark Henry. Um, but you know they hired him for more of the backstage presence, not necessarily the on stage presence. So, mm-hmm. but he hasn't meant a lot. When I think about Jay, when you ask me a question, is like, do I think they maximized her? I think for the type of performer that she is and her trajectory, I think they did. I don't think that. 
like much like a Cody, like Jade is more of a sports entertainer. And I don't think sports entertainers can reach their true ceiling in AEW because they're all about pro wrestling. They're about, it is what it is. The core of that company, the person running is all about matchups and matches, matchup and matches. And until the, until the, the, the brain trust that runs the company has a different outlook on wrestling, we're going to continue to get the same thing. They're going to continue to supersize that audience that sees what he sees, right? Because when we're mm-hmm. going to, you know, have a pay-per-view with almost zero build, and then we're going to call it one of the, the best pay-per-views of all times, like uh, a couple of days later, they're going to continue that same yeah. trajectory. They're going right. to continue to do the same things because, like, we're they're, they're the vocal minority. They're going to appreciate and they're going to love all the matches. So with going back to Jade, I think for her, again, she only wrestled. I'm not sure how many matches. I know she only wrestled professionally 60-something matches, whatever her record no, was. Right? I, I, no, I think her only matches were on TV. That, so whatever only her on record, TV. Whatever her record was, I don't, I don't know what her record was, whatever she was, 68-2, and two, whatever, that was it. And that's in four years, right? So I don't know her work ethic outside of that. I don't know how, how much time she's put in working on her craft. I would imagine she's a very hard worker. However, AEW doesn't have a true training system they like NXT one. does. They like, right? One. She's going to go... The reason why you're saying she's going to go there, she's going to be uh, instantly within months of better... Because she's going to have around-the-clock support at mm-hmm. NXT to train and learn and, 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 and add wrinkles to her, to, her, uh, to her craft. You know, she's going to have the... the the ability to wrestle with TJ Wilson, Natty, they're going to, they're all in Florida as well. Um, they've been helping a lot of different people kind of, you know, learn their craft and get better in the ring. You know, uh, just recently, um, uh, what's my man Dawkins. Um, TJ Wilson said that Dawkins has been working, I think three days a week or something like that, driving like an hour and a half down to his house, to train. And we're seeing Dawkins well, he's been on get that. better and better. I was going to say that when we started seeing like the progression, how his, you know, he got his body's got, you know, much more lean. And when we start seeing him in the match, I'm like, Oh, he's bringing yeah. a little bit more than Montez is right now. That's, that's when that started. Yeah, so you, Tyson you Kidd, TJ. Work. Yeah. Say yeah. he's been putting in the work. So just imagine that now that Jade is going to have the facility. If little she has the passion and the willingness to want to learn, like she has so many tools at her disposal. She just has a different um, structure that's been around forever and people in place that's going to allow her to grow and develop as a performer in ring, which is going to only add to her star presence, her look, her charisma and et cetera, that she's going to branch that to that, to that show. So her character, just like Cody is tailor made for that brand. Right? So when we talk about, when we talk about like the wrestlers that are in AEW, are they going to look, they've been looking, at 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 WWE, right? This you know, Andrade wanted to go back. You know, Malachi wanted to back. This this is all scuttle, but right? You know, uh, you know, uh, Miro wanted to go. A lot of guys wanted to go back, um, and have been interested. It's just a matter of like, you know, Jay Jay White thought he was going mm-hmm. right until so he got froze out and um, communication and everything else, right? So a lot of these guys are already on WWE, like their radar. And why not? Because it's the biggest thing in time. I would imagine that most of the wrestlers that are in the business right now are all fans. And they all started as fans of what? The WWE. Yep. Right? AEW wasn't even around. So all these guys have dreams and aspirations of getting, you know, quote unquote, to the big show. And so I think that Jay absolutely is going to, is going to be a better performer. Um, I'm just curious. I'm just hoping she stays hungry. And she she networks with the right people to keep her, because it's a different it's a different la- it's a different like landscape, in WWE than it was at AEW. Um, but she somehow, you know, watered uh, she weathered through the AEW landscape quite well, right? You never heard of any problems with her, and they consistently pushed her very very strongly. So you got the book and you got the pen. How are you debuting Jade, and what is her first feud? So this is what I'm doing. I I want to keep her in um, NXT for at least maybe six to eight months. Not whoa, because I don't whoa, think. Whoa, whoa, yep. 
<laughs> yep, I want to keep her in. I want to keep her in NXT six to eight months. Not because I don't think that, because I think her star presence, her look, and her charisma is main roster ready. But when you talked about those matches, mm-hmm. when you talked about those matches, that's what that that that's that's what can hold her back a little bit, right? Because then, look, I don't like to blast any wrestler, but I think you see somebody like Anaya Jax. Like right, how I knew you was gonna bring her up. How I know she's she's on you the main know. roster, and she's been on the main roster for a long time, and she hasn't really gotten that much better, right? I don't know this this new run, right? I know she's working with TJ and Natty um, for the past couple months, um, but prior to that, you know, she got stagnant a little bit as far as her ring. She didn't see, really see her get better, right? So once you you send Jade up to the main roster, she's gonna be on the road doing her thing. She has a kid. See, I, I would imagine they have some kind of concessions for her so she can spend time with her her daughter and her family. So once she's on the main roster, she's doing her thing. It's going to be very hard for her to kind of do like Dawkins is doing and kind of get in that extra work. I will send her to NXT just so she can get that ring work done. But what I would do, if I had to pin, I would keep that title at NXT Women's Championship on Becky. And as soon as Jay debuts, I'm having her squash this sh- out. I, I'm, I'm, I think the kids is no, no they're not next door. I also, I'll have Jay squash this shit out of Becky. That's how you make a name for it. You have her squash Becky, and you don't just play it on NXT. You play that bad boy on Raw. You play that bad boy on SmackDown. And you have her pop up on Raw, SmackDown, with that women's championship holding high, talking about what she did to Becky. Right? But at the same time, you keep her down there. You keep her. You keep her fresh. In the main roster's uh, mind, would you have right. her doing most of her heavy lifting in NXT? I love it. Everything you say, I love it. The reason why I reacted the way I did is because we know she's getting big money. And I don't, I don't know if you can set the precedent of big money, then you go to NXT. That's why I said that. From an in-ring talent perspective, anybody that knows anything about wrestling would say she could really use some time with Shawn Michaels. And that oh, yeah. team down there for some months and really hone in on her skills. That's a that's a given. I like where you're going with the Becky thing, though. I really like where you're going with the Becky thing because. And then yes, and now that has to turn into a feud. And Becky's a great ring general, so that's going to help her too. Uh, I don't have an answer to the question. Uh, I, I just thought that would be a good question for you because I know. Uh, you would have something. Did you see? Uh, did you notice the the shout out from WWE to the TFW pod on Raw Monday? You just brought up Nia no. Jax. So they did. Uh, they did a video package like twenty minutes into the show, showing her destruction of last week. She hits the bonsai drop. I forgot what they're calling it now for her, but she hits the bonsai bonsai drop. They show her smacking Rhea, and if you remember on last week's pod, you were talking about that spot and smacking her, and then I said. You, why don't you like her? Just because she's not like most girls. As soon as she starts smacking her, they play that part in the video package. Go back and watch. Mm. Okay. Or just sent me a text and was like, they watch. <laughs> I was like, one, <laughs> you should be asleep probably right now, but they absolutely watch. Shout out to whoever that was. We appreciate you and we love you. Make sure you get the word out. Tell, you, tell your folks to listen to. We got some good ideas over here. Um, last thing on WWE before we move on to the PWI. It's top 500 list. I don't care about the 500. And the, and the top 10 was pretty cool. But there was a something in there that was egregious. I don't know how that list even got made with what I'm going to talk about. Uh, Vince McMahon came out and said that... Uh, so they had a meeting with their employees. Vince McMahon, even though the company was breaking every single record at the time that they could possibly break, Financials, attendance, merchandise, breaking all these records. Vince McMahon said to uh, the talent, the team, that WWE was stagnant at the time. That's how he felt. And that's why he had to go ahead and, you know, merge with TKO and make this whole thing and, you know, sell the company because that was how they're going to take it to the next level because they were stagnant. I know. That's crazy. I know how to read between the lines. Do you know how to read between the lines on that one, sir? No, tell me what you got, brother. That means I was thrown out of my own company 
And unless I sold, I will still be on the sidelines. This is the way I got back. Is by selling the company to TKO. No company doubt. wasn't fucking st- oh, fuck. stagnant. 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 Crazy. Come on, man. Maybe maybe it was stagnant when you were still head of creative. Maybe. See, that's what I was thinking. That's what I'm like. Because I, I started, and when I sent you the text, I'm like, what the hell is this dude talking about, right? Um, but then I thought about, like, what, maybe. And his, so we talked about it for a long time. A couple of years ago. I'm not sure the time frame. But we talked about, like, when Nick Khan first started that. It seemed like, especially all the layoffs and they was making the money, et cetera, mm-hmm. that they were priming that company to be sold. That's what it seemed like. That was the thing. Like, maybe they're going to sell to Disney, whatever the case may be, right? But at that time, the show was kind of stagnant, especially with him as head of creative, right? I, I, I would say, from a fan perspective, from a wrestling perspective, that's why AEW started well, caught, caught fire and, and you know and grabbed our uh, our heartstrings, yeah, because we were, we were getting tired of the WWE creative. It was if I felt like it wasn't speaking to the fans. I would probably imagine they probably were losing fans, right? He gets out of there, all of a sudden. Like interest goes up, like the the the, the shows get better, et cetera. And as you said, like look, I can't get back in this current landscape. I gotta sell this. And I and and I I bet. Like here's the thing: is like you, you think about something, right? He had this merger with Endeavor and UFC. I wonder who came to him and said, "Hey, look." We need you back. We can get the company back. We can get you back involved. Here's, well, here's a, a, a allegedly, Ari Emanuel mm-hmm. said that because the because when this news broke uh, that Monday after Mania, when they were on all the the news outlets, Ari Emanuel said that I want Vince McMahon involved on the WWE side. Like he knows yeah. the business, et cetera, et cetera. So I think it strictly came from Ari, and he also told uh, the workers in WWE that. Ari is my boss. I guess he referred to him as he boss. Said so he said he's the boss. Yep. Which is nice. which is interesting. But yeah, when I, I saw that, I was like, I gotta bring it up on the pod. That's crazy. I just need to get like, I just dude, need to your get, business. I need to stagnant. get Vince. I need to get Vince out of here, man. I just don't. Looking like uh Mr. Jamerson. Jamerson from the so <laughs> <laughs> from Spider Man. He looks just like him. Man. Looks just like him. All right, man. Uh, so I so I told you that uh, hey, the PWI list came out a few days ago. I think you pulled it up, and all, only feedback I got. So if you don't know, l- let's go down the top ten. Let's start with ten. Number ten is Cody Rhodes. Number nine is Jax Alexander. Number eight is OC Orange Cassidy. Number seven is Okada. Number six is MJF. Number five is Vikingo. Number four is Gunther. Number three is John Moxley. Number two is Roman Reigns. And number one is Seth Rollins. The Shield is still dominating the damn wrestling business. Shout out to them, man. I don't think anybody has an issue with the top three. You can maybe you can maybe say you would flip them, but I think we're all good to top three, right? Yeah. Okay. The travesty to me, how is Billy Goat, Will Ospreay not in the top 10? You got to pull Josh Alexander out. Sorry. I... So here's, here's the thing. I'm looking at the list, man. Because like, I, I remember you were telling me you were upset with his admission for the top 10. I said, well, you know, mm-hmm. let me. I need to look at the criteria, right? Maybe it kind of makes sense based on the criteria. And the reason why I say that is because I think I think they base it based on what they've done in the U.S. You know, they they incorporate the world. So what the hell has Okada done in the but U.S.? But I think they that I he's think number they, seven, right? And I think that's why he's so low, right? Because if this was based in New Japan, he would be number one or two, right? So I I, I that's what I'm thinking. That can't Cause, be, man. Because some of the so, New Japan guys have always been kind of lower on the list, and you know, the WWE or WCW guys have always been higher on the list because. I'm a, I'm a huge PWI fan. I, I I love the PWI 500. I mean, I've been watch looking at these magazines since the early 90s, man. I love them so much. It was great. You get to see all these different wrestlers, 500 of all across the world. And back in my day, like, I assumed all wrestlers were good. 
like I didn't know there was such thing as a bad wrestler. Like, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. I guess match quality didn't. I didn't, you know, it. It. I didn't appreciate match quality until I got much older. Like, for a, a wrestling match was a wrestling match to me, so I assumed they all were good. Um, but I got the criteria here. Um, so number one, win loss record, prominence within a wrestler's promotion and promotions, overall wrestling ability, and the evaluation periods from July first, twenty twenty two, to July first, twenty twenty three. So it's the wrestlers in that time frame, and that was their criteria for that list. Okay. Okay. So, so okay. So in-ring achievements, technical ability, competition, who they, who they wrestled, and then Promise influence. within the, yep, promise right? within promotion, okay. yep, major cool. fields. Okay, cool. How do you not put, and shout out to PWI. It is hard to make a five a list of five hundred wrestlers. So this is kind of tongue in cheek. It's not tongue in cheek that there's no way in hell Billy Goat shouldn't have been top ten. But this has to take a ton of work. Uh, so shout out to those guys. They, to your point, they've been a staple in doing this for years and years and years. But now knowing that criteria, they have Will Osprey at number seventeen. Mm-hmm. They have Osprey behind Brian Danielson, behind Samoa Joe. Behind Carmelo Hayes, behind Claudio, behind Sonata. No, no, that's a travesty. Absolutely not. No, Sonata no. has been has has gotten a bigger push of the two in in New Japan though this year. Get, put him in the top ten. Take out Josh Alexander. Um, are you good with the top five? Are you good with Vikingo Gunther? In the hell, let me tell you something, Vikingo. Velkingo, bro, I know that's your guy. Yeah, he's like yeah. that's your guy, right? Now go, now go off, now go off of criteria, go off criteria, influence, technical ability. <sighs> so here's the thing, and, here, and here's where I, my fandom is, because like this might be this guy, because I don't think it's the same guys from back in our day. I think a lot of those guys that used to do this They're back young, in our I day, think, yeah, yeah, made they maybe they don't watch a lot of New Japan, but obviously they watch a lot of Mexico. I don't watch much, you know of his work in Mexico, his trip away or wherever he's working. I've seen him show up on indie shows. I've seen him do a spot or two on AEW, but that's not major to me. Any of the any positions I've seen him in on national television aren't major feuds, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not prominence within that. He hasn't, he hasn't done anything of prominence on major TV in the U.S. that I've seen. No, so he hasn't. Be not, no. For him to be yeah. number five, for being he, number five, he's had some bangers in AAA though. So if you're going to put Josh Alexander at nine, if you're going to put a Sonata at eleven, I know Sonata's IWGP Heavyweight Champion, but Sonata just ain't what Okada was, or you know what I mean? Like, not to but, throw shade at him, but King, but King at five. I'm not saying he shouldn't be in the top fifteen or third. Like, I'm not familiar with his work outside of what I've seen on him major shows. But okay. I, he, no way, no way from what I've seen. He hasn't been, he hasn't, like, if you look at the other guys on those lists, and like, again, yeah, I take the Mexican, I, I don't know what he's, I don't even know what promotion he's in. And that's the thing. I don't AAA. know what promotion he's in. He's in AAA. He's in. Yeah. Right. So he's in Triple H. I like, and I wonder how many, I guess, hardcore fans, but I think there, I think those fans are in the minority as well. I think from a national level, I don't think he should be in the top five. Maybe in the top fifteen. Now, Josh Ooh. Alexander, okay, by at number nine. I know that you know his work, especially amongst his peers, he is 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 up there. It's mm-hmm. top notch. Mm-hmm. AEW. I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna argue. I think that if he would went to AEW, he'd be a mid card guy. That's just my thing. Um, and I'm not saying he's not great, but going to your point about Will Ospreay. So my only thing about Will Ospreay, like like. Talk about quality of matches and prominence. He's been in some big matches at AEW, but he hasn't been in many on national television. He's mm-hmm. been in New Japan, and I, I think in New Japan he's been like the probably, like probably the third or fourth guy in New Japan. I think. But when I look at this list, and this is why this is why I feel like this is just a bunch of fan talk right here because it doesn't make sense to me how it how it how they had it mapped out. So at number fifteen. Masha Slamovich. Mm-hmm. She's the top 
according to this list, she's the top rated women's wrestler in the in the, in the world. Yeah. And I like my I like I, and I like Monster, but I, I don't like her more than I like her tag partner right now, Killer Kelly. I can well I got a thing for Killer Kelly though. Oh, <laughs> that's too. outside of that's too. outside Man, of she, yeah, that's outside of that. Hey, but, hey and she 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 had a picture with uh Robert England, you know, who used to be mm-hmm. Freddie. Oh, yeah. like, mm-hmm. and, and I think Robert was holding on to oh, a real tight. Yeah. I think he was like it was. Too. Yeah, he, he was sure holding was. real tight. <laughs> but you mean tell me that Masha, and this is like, I've seen her wrestle a couple of times and nothing really stood out to me, but I wasn't really checking for her like that either, to be honest with you. But you mean tell me she's the number one rated women's worker based on that criteria, major feuds, you know, quality of competition, prominence, like maybe her prominence in, in, in impact is, is, has been such, but I don't think she's ever been the impact champion most of the year. Cause, uh, um, I think what's the, uh, what's my girl's name, man? Uh, dark hair, Chelsea's best friend. Brett's cool with her too. Uh, where's where's she working at? Impact. She was the Impact champion. Trinity beater. Oh, Diana. Diana. Diana's been dominating that that Deanna's, title. Diana's not even in the top twenty-seven. So that was my point. You have a. I mean, that point is more than valid. Once again, I can understand how hard it is to do five hundred, but for Bianca to not be in the It'd top be, twenty-seven. There's not another woman in the top 27 on this list. I mean, it's, it's crazy. That's the one thing. I'm like, I get that maybe from a, 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 you know, a hardcore wrestling fan, right? You think about like a wrestler, like maybe he might think that Masha is a better wrestler than Bianca, but Bianca isn't a slouch. Like, I can't think of a bad Bianca match. Like, they're fine to good. And the quality of her opponents, I, I would say it's probably a little bit higher. Right and on the level of when she performs, it's higher as well. And for how long she's been doing it, it's another factor. So I think overall the list is flawed. I'm done with it. Before when when Matt when Matt told me about the list, I said, "Oh, I went back into my childhood." And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and buy the episode. I mean, buy the issue. Like I know it's only digital now, right? And then I saw like the top the, the top twenty. I said, "Hex to the no." They got the wrong dudes writing for the magazine. They got the wrong dudes rating for the magazines. No thank you. Horrible list. I don't even know what the rest of the 500 is, but you done fudged up the first, like, 20 of them. I don't want to hear nothing else you got to say about it. I'm good. Fuck, can't go number guy, five. My guy, he just worked himself into Masha a shoot. Masha, num- the number one rated, you know, worker. Uh, who else they got in this list? Jake Lee is 23. Matt, who's Jake Lee? I saw that. I, I felt bad who's when Jake I knew. Lee? I didn't, you know, at, at that point, I wanted to stay in my ignorance because I'm like, uh, it's not who I think it is. And I was like, I don't know who that is. So you mean tell me he got Jake Lee. So this 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 guy or gal has to know that most God. people don't know who Jake Lee is. But you and let's because Jake Lee rated. is not Jake something, right? No, that's Jake. No, something. it's not. Yeah, no, yeah. Jake it's, Lee is a so uh, he's an oh he's a Korean bullshit. professional wrestler. He's a Korean professional wrestler. He is so he's currently signed to Pro Wrestling Noah. We know that where he is the GHC heavyweight champion in his first reign. No, Jake Still, Lee. To me, there's no way Jake Lee is is was bigger than Bianca. And I'm going to Bianca because she broke. I mean, we're going from July to July. But guess, guess, guess what? Guess what, Matt? Jake Lee is rated higher than Kenny Omega. That's a travesty, dude. That's a travesty. I mean, I, no, thank you, sir. Thank you for keeping money in my pocket. Your list is trash. Ooh. Like this is see, this is see. I, I'm actually learning my production skills, friends and fam of the podcast. So you will see a trash. <laughs> picture on the YouTube. That's what this list is. It's trash. Uh, all right, so we can move on then. Uh, that was funny. Thank you. Thank you for that laugh. I appreciate you. You definitely worked yourself into a shoot. Oh uh, CM Punk said he's not suing AEW. Said he just wants to move on with his life. Uh, hey, hey, Punk. No shit, man. You, you can't sue. You, you choked out one of your co-workers and then you told your boss you hate him and you're going to kill him. You mean you should be glad they're not suing you, sir. Like you can't, you can't right. sue them. All right. Mm. Uh, mm. He did say though, he did MMA commentary this past Friday. And I guess they were talking about, you know, him being back or whatnot. And he said he has time on his hands for the next two months. 
When you do the math, two months is Survivor Series. He does not have a non-compete. Some people took that as a 60-day non-compete. Typically, non-competes are 90 days. He doesn't have a non-compete. He's free to do whatever he wants to right now. Put you on the spot now, E, and say, is he just talking? Or do you think he has a handshake deal in place already with WWE to return to WWE at Survivor Series or in November? So, from a pure fan, I would love to see Punk come back. And I would like to see him in his career on a positive note. Not wrapped around like you know scrutiny and negativity Mm -hmm. so i would love it but it just it seems like this is a a whole wave right like so you take it take it take a step back let's say you gotta hire somebody for for a spot and the reason why this person is available is because they told your last boss that they hated him (laughs) choked out an employee (laughs) words that you threw a monitor (laughs) towards their way Alienated half the half the locker room. Would you openly walk with? Oh, and mind you, the last time you had him, he told you to f you. <laughs> he told you to f you and the boss. So you're gonna bring this guy back who has a history of authority problems and locker room problems. You're gonna hire him back just like that, right? Fresh, right? Like you know, <laughs> like I get it. Like you're like, hey, I have some time to think about do some things. Like this is for hot. Off the controversy, you bringing them back to your company, right? So now, room. so like, now, ah. if we want to be a uh, conspiracy theorist, this goes back to what I said two weeks ago. No, that man. visit backstage to Monday Night Raw in Chicago, where he met briefly behind closed doors with Triple H, and Vince McMahon made the call that hey, he has to leave. That conversation could have been, hey, if I get out my contract, do I have a spot here? And H could have said, if you get out your contract, let's talk. And that's and Punk could have said, that's all I need to hear. Thanks. We'll see. Because we talked we talked about it a lot, so we'll see. But I will say this though, because if you know Triple H sat under the Vince McMahon tree of business. And one thing you can say about about Vince McMahon is that he doesn't hold personal feelings in in the way of making good business. Yep. So Vince McMahon most certainly would take CM Punk back if he felt like he can make money with him. Hell, he took Warrior back and didn't Warrior sue or try to sue Vince a few times? It's a thousand people he took back after they... You know what I'm saying? The only person he never took back was Macho Man. We talked about that too, but like everybody else that did him wrong. Bruno. I mean, everybody. Everybody's been been back. And in in, in a lot of ways, you kind of, if you're, if you think about it from a bigger picture level, is that I won because you coming back to me. Oh, yeah. Right, right? Yeah. So but I do think as much as you kind of said it um, when you talked about him ending on a high note, he can't end his career off that. Not like that. Like, he, he can't. Like, for me mm-hmm. alone, if I was Phil Brooks, I would be like, and it's not the same going to Impact. I know he's got friends at Impact. You know, it's not the same if he did a run in NJPW. No, you know, there's two big dogs in the fight. It's AEW and that's WWE. And I would be like, look, I got to make sure I still got a love for this business. You don't work that kind of match he had with Joe if you still don't have love for this. Hmm. I would be like, I got to do what I got to do to make it right to where I can end on the right note. So, like I said, we'll see. We, we, we will see. You had a question about um, Collision before we get to the quick hits. And I can't remember what you asked. I know you asked if I watched it. I said I was going to watch it on delay. Do you remember what that question was? Oh, yeah. So, like, I started to ask you. And so, when we first watched, when we started watching Collision, we both agreed that Collision felt different. Mm -hmm. It felt like something we hadn't watched from AEW product. It felt like a different show almost entirely. It had a different feel to it. Now, Punk's been going for two shows now. And I'm not talking about the match quality. I'm not talking about the show quality. I'm not asking if if the show's good. I'm just, you know, and just just for me, because I don't really have an opinion either way. But do, does does Collision still have that different feel that it had when we first started watching? Does it still feel like something different from AEW? So the first show without Punk, 
I'm like, okay, they're going to be fine. It's past Saturday. I was like, this is not enough for me to consistently watch live every Saturday. Hmm. The show was still good. It was a good show. Damn good. Really good. It was a good show. Mm-hmm. But I'm watching, and it was during the, once again, it's nothing personally against any wrestler. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I don't, I don't need Dark Order in a prominent spot on a collision show on Saturday. John Silver, I'm sure he's a the hell of a man? guy. The meat I'm sure man? he's a hell of a guy. You're not a serious character wrestler. I don't need to see you in a, in a match against a tag team wrestler one-on-one on, on collision. Like when we first heard about collision, it was all about, Hey, it's a soft split. This is CM Punk show. I was watching Saturday and I'm like, this is now just another AEW show. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if just another AEW show is enough for me to have appointment. It was appointment viewing with Punk for me. It was. When it was a CM Punk led show and Bullet Club Gold was getting hot and Ricky was just now finally back to doing his thing again. I was like, oh no, this is hell. How many times did we say on here like top two show of the week? That and SmackDown. Mm-hmm. One and two. Every single week. One and two. One and two. One and two. And I just it was so many times watching on Saturday. I was just like, this is now just another wrestling show and that goes back to what i was saying with earlier when we were talking about the jay thing and all that it, it has to be more than just wrestling you got to give fans more than just wrestling and it's, it's and i hate we sound like i'm sure we sound like the old guy get off my line person right screaming at the clouds in the sky because when vince used to say he said it in the storyline but we know he meant it backstage too i give the fans what they want because even the fans don't know what they want they think they know they think they want something but they don't want it AW fans, all of us, we're we're AW fans, right? We're wrestling fans. We think we want awesome matches because we do, but you need more than that. And I mean, there was some story in Collision, yeah. but to answer to answer your question, and I didn't know that was that was your question, but to answer it, I, I when I watched it, I was kind of just like, man, something is missing. Something's missing. And I think that also goes back to why ticket sales are down across the board too, because something is missing. And it's hard to kind of put a finger on it because it's, because if, if it's, if it's you and I talking, right. If Tony Khan was to say, look, I'm going to bring you guys on as advisors. I, I have a ton, but I would say, okay, now cool. Love it. I would absolutely help. I would love to help, but I'd have a question. Are you going to continue? doing TV the way you've always done it or are you open to change? Because that would completely change the way I would advise. Because if we're going to continue to do TV the way we've always done it, I can still try to pick some things and give you that. But if you say, no, I'm, I'm open to everything. Okay, then we're probably going to need to rewrite how we do television. Because even down to everything is announced. I don't know if it's a TBS thing. I don't know if it's a TNT thing. It was announced before the show. We will hear from Switchblade Jay White. Switchblade Jay White comes out with the Bang Gang Gang after Andrade and Scorpio Sky wrestle, which that's pretty cool. Scorpio Sky is back and he's already losing. Okay, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I don't need to know I'm going to hear from him like that. You know what I mean? Like It's, it's stuff like that. Like Leave some things up for... Let me turn the TV on and see what's happening. On Raw this past Monday. And I I shit on them every chance I get, so I got to give them props when they do something great. Ivar. And Kofi killed that match. That was a good match, was it? They killed. Had the crowd. Match was fantastic. We didn't, like, that wasn't announced before, like, a big deal. But, But when it was happening, it was a big deal. Right? Like, some things just, I don't need to know everything. Give me one or two matches you're going to do. If you want to tell me MJF's going to be on the show because he draws ratings, cool. Leave it at that. And I, I think that also changed it too. I don't want to know every segment what I'm going to see. I don't. Leave something up for suspense or surprise. 
No, that's that's a good point. I, I don't think I necessarily mind as much. I kind of get that like, you might be trying to keep people to to keep watching. Like, oh, this is coming up next. Stick around. This is coming up next, right? Try to, try to keep you engaged. Um, but I wanted to ask you that because like, I, I saw it a little bit last week, and then especially this week, that it was a good show. Like you said, I like John Silver. I like the Dark Order guys, but you're right. I mean, they are a, a lower mid-card, you know, act. Um, you know, the show seemed like a really good AEW show. Mm-hmm. And that was the point. Because I know when I when I asked you that, because you like you know where I was going. But for me, just personally, on a Saturday night, like you know, just just another good AEW show is it enough for me to watch consistently, especially on a Saturday? If this was on a different night, maybe so. Um, but like just for me as a fan, I I I don't want to say I love AEW. I I really like AEW. I really enjoy it. You know, it's just for just as in anything, right? I have a preference for the style of things I like, right? I'm a huge right. anime fan. I don't love all anime. I like most of it. And there's certain anime I prefer watching over others. With AEW, it's more about the matches and the moves. And they sprinkle in the occasional storytelling, like with MJF and Adam Cole. Like and the reason why we get a lot of these things with MJF, because MJF writes a lot of his stuff. Chris Jericho writes a lot of his stuff. That's just simply not enough to keep me engaged as a viewer. Like for instance, when we watch like uh, Raw or SmackDown, you know, there's certain shows that are just fine. There's just there there's shows that you know nothing really big or spectacular happened in it. But from a story perspective they always had different threads throughout the show that you can follow they had things that that were kind of building a, a story so you can kind of follow along to where when you watch the show it was a nice easy enjoyable watch you can kind of get it on and off with aew they don't always have those storyline threads throughout the show so you're really from moment to moment you're kind of really just watching the next match and then the next match and things of that nature and then that's what they're going to consistently bring me on Saturday nights, nothing more, nothing different than I'm getting on, you know, you know, Dynamite. And you're going to see a lot of the crossover, you know, guys from Dynamite popping up on Collision. You know, it's I know they're probably doing something with uh, House of Black because I think, actually, there actually was a really awesome video that Julia Hart um, put on her Twitter. But it was just that. It was on her Twitter. It wasn't well, yeah, on... Yeah, because they showed her at the end of the title match watching. Did they show her? Okay. Yeah, they, they showed her. Yeah, they, they shot to her really quick. They showed the video? No. Oh, he had an awesome video. Like, you don't see that. Like, you see, you see that stuff on Twitter. But it's just, so, it's just yeah, for me. Go back and look at that dance. If, it's, if, it's, if, if, I'm, if I'm just going to get more of what I'm getting on Dynamite, then I'm not going to be able to consistently watch the show every week. Um, I mean, of course, I'll keep tabs. We got to see what's going on. I'll be there for the bit. And I think that's the problem. As I, as I go long winded on this, I think that's the problem with, uh, with the fan base. Like, right? Because. I think they're conditioning us as fans to only show up when they announce big things, right? You think about like the the shows. Yes. No, you're right. The, the, the Grand Slam, like all these different theme shows that they do, right? Like they're like that's when people show up. They show up for those big matches. They're not watching consistently on a week to week basis. Not all of them, right? They're showing up for the big matches in the big moments and, and you just can't do big do. matches like that every week you can't not every week. yes you can you can do good wrestling every single week you can't do big matches every single week and the reason why i get so passionate about talking about AEW is because i want them to to succeed we all do if you if you anyone listening just started watching wrestling in the last two years you don't know the pain we went through we, oh my god for we years we, no. In WWE, yes. putting out trash product, Decade. but that was basically the biggest thing that we had. Yeah, you had Impact. That was when we used to watch New Japan. Ishan and I had a New Japan World subscription, and we would watch every single like New Japan pay per view. And it was because we were dying, we were thirsting for something different. And when AEW came, it was like, Home yes, for this alternative. Is it. Yep. So that's why, like, we get passionate on here because I'm sure it could sound like, man, like these guys really hate AEW. Why do they still watch? It's not that. I hate it or that Ishan hates it. I can only speak for myself on this. It's just because when I see business metrics, 
not moving and I can look and see why they're not moving, I just want them to adapt. That's all. Because I want them to be around forever. You don't want one company, even if, let, let, let's reverse it. And say right now, WWE was trash. AEW's not trash, but say they were just trash. I want them to figure it out too. Because you, you don't to. want one entity running the business. Mm -mm. So, and maybe too with AEW, they know like they are, they are going up against college football. Maybe they're just like, look, let's just continue to put out good stuff. We're going to get trounced over the next three months, the same way Monday Night Raw is get trounced. Monday Night Raw had the second lowest rating in the history of that show this week. And they were going up against two horrible football games. But it's football. That just shows that football is king. Like, no matter just, what football, football game is on, they are going to surpass anything that WWE puts out there. But that, that's why that that's why we get like that with AEW. We we just want to see them do fantastic. We need that's them all. to do fantastic for the health of the business. We want to see these guys. That's what we talked about earlier. You know, we love to see you know Jay go to WWE, or for me, I would see like a guy like Dolph Ziggler or some of the other guys who are underutilized go to you know AEW to freshen up and get a new start. We want to see wrestling at a high standard. We want biz jobs for the wrestlers. We want we want it all for everybody because it's best for everybody involved. Yep. Yep, 100%. Couple quick hits and we get out of here. Uh, you, we talked about SmackDown, but we didn't bring up John Cena. John Cena had an interaction with the Bloodline and Solo Sokoa on the Grayson Waller effect. Tell me if I read too much into this. Backstage before that, Solo says, um, I basically, I'm going to take care of this tonight. Heyman asked Solo at that point, who made that call? Solo didn't answer. Then Heyman gets to go on the phone, call Roman Reigns. Is there somebody else involved in this? Or do you think that was just something that Heyman said and it's not going to mean anything to the story? You know, now that you mention it, it's, it's interesting to thought of it, but who else could it be? Oh, I mean, who else? I mean, we, I, like, it can't be The Rock because like, he's, he's healed. I mean, that would be, that would be him turning heel on a John Cena. We want to see Cena. I'm sorry. We want to see Roman versus Roman. Rock versus Roman? Rock versus Roman. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, I took it as Solo going off. Going, off, going, going in off business for himself? Yeah. Doing this thing. Okay. He's like, hey, I'm going to take care of this thing. Roman ain't here. He doing this thing. I'm, I'm going to do what needs to be done. Because he, at this point, he's the new, the new right-hand man, right? Seems like it. Seems like it. Okay. Uh, I love KO. KO's the man. I, I, I thought it was a genius way. I, I, you know, when you watch wrestling as long as we have, you, I just like little small different things. I thought the way they went to commercial on Raw Monday after the first segment was fantastic. KO comes out, sits on the top, uh, turnbuckle and tells Cody, hey, we need to talk. And they go right to commercial. Announcers don't announce they're going to commercial. They go right to commercial. They come back from commercial and KO is like, now that we're back on air so everybody can hear it, and he goes to his thing. thought it was tremendous. Like Everything like they that. give That's... KO is fantastic. They, they, they usually don't do that, too, which is nice. Like, that little transition. Because, like, they'll, you know, all of a sudden they go off air, you know, and they're just standing ring. What are we doing the yeah. whole time, right? So yep. he kind of explained why he waited. Like, look, I want to do this in front of everybody. Let's yep, go. I love that. I like that. So that was the positive. The negative is, please let Monday be the last time we see KO and Sammy against the Judgment Day. They're running the back. I'm done. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't do it. I can't do it. I did like Shinsuke. Uh, he had a good night. He Monday did. with Seth. Remember I said last week, I'm like, uh, I'm still a little like, uh, but Monday really kind of, I was like, okay, all right. They're, they're starting to heat it up. And that's a good thing. Uh, last thing I had from Raw was there was a report that came out that Tegan Knox was supposed to uh, take Becky on for her open challenge and it was and then ended up being Natty. Saw a lot of discourse online about damn that sucks for Tegan, et cetera, et cetera. I'm completely fine with it. Outside of being Natty. Any any bone you can give Natty, cool. But more than that, this was going to turn into what I talked about last week that I'm tired of, the good showing thing. Unless there is a story attached to Tegan jumping Becky afterwards, or you're gonna put a storyline behind Tegan. I don't want to see Tegan just lose to Becky on a random raw. And then, then what? But it would have been a good showing. So let's do it. 
I'm just not a fan of the good showing. Well, what did you think about the story when you heard that, hey, it was supposed to be Tegan, but then they, they switched it like 10 minutes before doors open? I thought about like, man, what, what did they bring her back for? Right? For to not use her? Like, she's a good wrestler. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I like what she's doing. I think she's kind of has the multicolored hair thing. I think she has a nice look. I think she's, she's good in the ring. She's overcome a lot of adversity. I mean, she had she had injury after injury after injury in NXT. So she's finally back healthy. And then you bring her back and you don't use her. So, but at the same time, if you are trying to put on the show um, to go against football, do you want a name like Natty versus Becky or Tegan Knox, who you haven't seen her? Like they almost have to reintroduce her. It's how correct. Like at this point, they have correct. to reintroduce her because she has been meant nothing in TV for almost a year. She they haven't been done anything with her. I think it sucks for her, right? That she wasn't given the opportunity. And it's interesting that you know Becky in her promo, she said that, "Hey, Natty, you know this was for somebody who hasn't been given yeah. the opportunity. And, you know, you've been here for two years, right? <laughs> that was a shoot. Now it's a shoot." <laughs> Straight up, it was a shoot, right? <laughs> but you know, I, I, like we, you know, we um, we haven't seen NXT yet. Maybe T can get her 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 shot on NXT. Hey, you know what? And, and, and to continue to be honest with you, I wouldn't mind Tegan Knox going back down to NXT. She's Send really, her back really down good. there, and they they Send need to do something. But I mean, just to your point reintroduce her and, and the reintroducing is not having her lose to Becky I don't care how good the match would have been it doesn't matter we haven't seen her in months she comes back to lose and other people are like oh but it's against Becky I get that let's build her up first there's nothing wrong with the good show but hey no bring her bring, let, let Tegan go to NXT and let her lose a series of matches to Jade let's go you can do that you can yes. do, do, absolutely do that you got, a, you got any other quick hits before we get out of here no, like I just just an enjoyable show. I've been holding off on and talking to uh, about some wrestling with my main man here. We got a lot of wrestling to talk about. We did coming man. up on Sunday we, too. So yes. this this is the great thing about being a fan, right? There's so much to talk about. We got some some fresh talent. We got some hot shows coming up. We got the Rock back. We got Jay coming. Man, we got some good things going. I know we come on here and we can play. Right, but we got a lot of things to be to, to be happy about as wrestling fans too. Think about it tonight. We got Grand Slam headlined by MJF Samoa Joe. You giving Joe any chance of beating MJF? It's gonna be a great showing, Matt. It's gonna be a you great showing. Him, you giving him any chance of beating MJF? No chance. No chance of hell. No chance. That's what I initially think, but with his bad neck, I just think they have a chance to do something pretty cool here with this. I do. I'm excited to see that. Friday, we got EO against Asuka, the match I've been waiting for for plus, year plus. Super excited for that. Um, and then we got John Cena, his next thing now, of course, with, with Jimmy and the Bloodline. And then Collision, we got a, a big match with um, FTR and who are, they, who are they taking on? I can't remember now, but I, but I know they're in a big match. Hey, I'm going to leave you with this. I wrote it down. What if we can get Jimmy Uso solo? Versus John Cena and The Rock. You know what I did think? On Monday, I was like, are they setting up a Survivor Series match? With, like, Jay, Cody, Sammy. Who did I have? I had Jay, Cody, Sammy, KO, and Drew. Against Roman... Jimmy, Solo, and who were the other two? I forgot who the other two was, but I, I had that thought. I don't think that's happening. I think Drew's about to turn heel, which I can't wait for. Oh no, I we're gonna get coming. we're gonna get Drew and the Judgment Day versus KO, Sammy, Jay, and Cody. Oh my goodness! On that note, time to go. We out of here. Thank you guys for listening. I plugged the socials already earlier, so you guys had that. If you have not already followed the podcast, follow us. Leave us a five-star review. Leave us a comment. Those are always appreciated. 
and we will be back on Sunday to run over a run over, run down everything we just talked about that is still upcoming this week in wrestling. Thank you guys for listening to the Dirty Dynamic Duo. I think it'll be just two of us again, so hopefully you like the show. <laughs> and if you were an AEW fan that did not listen, you won't even hear this, so it doesn't even matter. So we will break everything down for you on Sunday. Thank you guys for listening. We'll holler at you then. Peace.